everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that piece of art that actually is hanging in the art gallery next door called Women with Impact. And you're going to get a little view about um, why I did it and how I did it, so behind, behind the scenes. Uh, I've been interested in and active in amateur astronomy for about ooh, 20 years. Uh, started in Singapore when I bought my first telescope there. It's nice and warm in Singapore. You're right at the equator. You can be out every night, not so much here. And uh, when I moved to Montreal, I joined the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. And uh, I did the kind of things that amateur astronomers do, um, you know, sketching at the eyepiece. I do a lot of that actually um, uh, from Outremont. And uh, I can't get beautiful images like we've just seen uh, from downtown, but one a wonderful thing to look at is the moon. Uh, because even if you're downtown underneath a street light, you can still see the moon really well. And uh, of course, this is my Rickle moon atlas. Uh, and when I, when I sketch, I always have it there. And one of the things that I noticed going through the moon atlas and looking at the moon itself is the beautiful nomenclature. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever really looked at the moon atlas. So all the large areas uh, that, as uh, Robert has explained, people used to think are seas, um, sort of around here. They, I don't think you can actually read this. So um, you know the ocean of storms, uh, sea of tranquility. But if you look at, at other areas, there's the Bay of Rainbows and the Lake of Dreams and the Thunderhead Peninsula. And I think they're very sort of magical terms. But when you look at the actual craters, they are all named after people. You know, great men like Plato and Galileo, of course, and Copernicus. And uh, as I was sort of going through my moon atlas, I thought, hmm, I wonder how many of these people are women. And as it turns out, there are 1,605 named craters on the moon. I know that because I counted them. Uh, there's a list. And it turns out, oh, I'm not going to fast forward. What do you think is the magic number? How many women do we have up there? It is not half. OK. 29. I think that's low. That's 1.8%, which is like this much. I don't want to be greedy. You know, I don't want to ask for much. But I think 1.8% is very little. And uh, actually, I'm not that surprised. Why am I not surprised? I don't live here, but I th thought I'd just take the screenshot of where you live and think about where you live and sort of walk in your mind around your streets and think about what the, who the streets are named for and sort of run a tally in your head about how many of those people are women. When I walk around Montreal, <coughs> not that many. Uh, and I don't know your quartier very well, but you know you do that exercise in your hand, own head. Uh, so this is the thing. The moon reflects sunlight, but it also reflects Earth. It reflects us. It reflects humanity, our ideas, our culture, our preconceptions about what is important. And it all gets projected up there. So what am I going to do about it? I like to do things about it. I don't just like to sit around and you know mope. So artists then get ideas for art projects. This is how I get ideas for art projects. And I decided just to draw all of them. So that serves two purposes. One is I get to know all the creators. And my first response is uh, I build knowledge through drawing. That's my go-to. And then after that, I do other things. And also, just to highlight it, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have this exhibition of these 29 craters, and people will come in and say, what is this? And say, well, I have a story for you. Uh, so I, I did a little research. I tracked all these craters down. So half of them are on the facing side of the moon, and the other half of them are on the far side of the moon, which means my telescope is not going to be super helpful. 
unless I get a very big research grant from Canada Council and they sent me out there, uh, which I would go on. Uh, so plan B is uh, actually an excellent plan. Uh, the Lunar Orbital Data Explorer uh, have a beautiful website where you can go, and I put the URL there, just in case you want to sort of play along, or maybe not on your, on your phones, but maybe later. And here, I'm, I'm just gonna show you how Tereshkova crater, uh, what I did with her. So I have the coordinates, and then you can kind of zoom in, zit, zit, and there she is. Uh, and what you'll notice, <coughs> You have different kind of filters. This uh, website doesn't just show uh, the the um, Lunar Orbiter Explorer, the LCROSS mission, but also the older Clementine missions. And the reason that is interesting is that you get different lunations, uh, and also really funky stuff if you go for the sort of gravitational uh, filters. But uh, interesting, but not good for my project. So this is the one I picked. And then I would print them out, and I would start drawing them. Uh, the um, the shadows on the moon are so absolutely black, unforgivingly black, because there's no atmosphere. So for that, I like to use black acrylic paint, punches a nice hole in the paper, and the rest is all graphite, very old style. Uh, and I like drawing because it kind of, uh, whatever it is you're drawing, it just tools itself in your head. You remember so much better. This is why I sketch at the eyepiece. My friends at the Astronomy Club will take pictures, and then afterwards they can't tell one crater from the other. I know all my craters because I draw them. And here's the family portrait. Shantian did such a beautiful job hanging them. Uh, and I think it has a certain impact. So the reason, and you asked me this, uh, why they're called women with impact. Well, craters are formed by impact. There's something that hit the lunar surface physically to make that impact. But the women who got moon craters named after them, they also made an impact. They made an impact on science and they made an impact on our lives. So it's a little play on words right there. And I think when they're all hung together, it also makes a nice impact. A couple of notes on some of the craters. Uh, when you stand in front of them, what you'll notice is uh, not every crater is the same. You think of moon craters, you have this one iconic image in your head, hole in the ground, basically. Once you start, start drawing them and really get to know them, you notice that, well, we have your ye old bull crater, but also some that are much more fun, that have nice secondary cratering going on. Uh, maybe some have smooth cra uh, crater uh, floors and others have central peaks and more terraced walls. And, um, actually, a friend of mine did her PhD only on the central peaks of moon craters. It's a thing. Uh, this crater you cannot see. It is underneath the surface. It's also not yet official. Uh, this is uh, Earhart Crater, after Amelia Earhart, and the Grail uh, probe um, measured the gravitational shifts in the moon and noticed that there's a huge impact crater underneath that area. So you can't see it. It's filled with regolith, but it's there. So the provisional name is Earhart, and we'll see if the International Astronomical Union will give it the green light. And for, for this exhibition, I had a last minute edition. So I just, uh, I don't have a scan of this yet, so you're gonna have to go next door and see it. Uh, this is the Sally K. Wright impact site. Sort of a crater, but not really. Uh, Sally Field was actually one of the PIs uh, of the Grail mission. And when the uh, probe crashed on the lunar surface, they thought it would be a really great idea to name the impact site after her. So she's up there, because whenever I go through the list of 29, people ask me, is Sally right on there? You know, first, first American astronaut. And I've got to go, well, no, not really. She's a debris field. So there's, there's debate about, you know, whether we could not have done better for Sally Wright. Uh, you know, she, get, she gets mangled metal and the, and the skid mark, but at least she's there. So I included her in the 29, which is now 30 drawings. But I'm doubling down. I'm not done. So here's my, my next idea. Let's see if we can get... Uh, 3.6%. Can we get a few more craters? So I've uh, I started making a list for the for the new 29. 
And, and here just a, like a couple of ideas uh, who we could include. I, I also noticed that the 29 that we have right now tend to be uh, <coughs> white, North Americans, and they're kind of clustered around certain ideas, like you know the computers at Harvard uh, Observatory. And I wanted to go a bit back further in time, maybe to you know before, sort of in the BC area, also include different ethnic groups and different heritages. Uh, but uh, so the convention is, if you want to have Moon Crater named after you, you it helps if you're uh, an astronomer or mathematicians of you know, physics, philosophy works too. And you have to be dead a minimum of three years. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. You're all wonderful, but, but not yet. Um, so, you know, a couple of ideas like Ada Lovelace, you know, she, she's Rosalind Franklin. And, and I, I talked to um, a colleague of mine at SETI uh, who is a PI on the um, New Horizon mission. You know, they just imaged Pluto. And he had just submitted uh, something to the IAU, you know, a couple of ideas about the newly imaged features that could be named. And he goes like, I can't believe, like Ada Lovelace doesn't have a crater, like no, she has nothing named after her. And she's like, I'll help you. Like this, this is not right. So, so I have a little, at least a little assistance. Uh, the last image I see, let me see if this plays. Ah, yes. So that's from the uh, same orbiter that, uh, whose website I'm using. And about three people have sent me this on Facebook in the last four days. So I, you may have seen it. In case you haven't, I just love this image because we don't get to see the far side of the moon. And we always, you know, the moon looks flat to us and it looks flat to our minds, but to be able to actually see it move and just to see the relationships between the front and the back you know, see the side. I, I think this gives you such a wonderful, plastic, realistic uh, view of the moon that I just I find very um, magical and hypnotic. So if you have any questions later, feel free to tap me on the shoulder or go to my website or stop by my studio. I'm downtown Montreal. If you know the Belgo building, St. Catherine Corner, Bleury, uh, it has 23 art galleries in it. Visual Voice is one of them, and my studio is right behind, so feel free to drop in, and you can pet my puppy, and you can see me paint moon craters. So that's it. Thank you.